think you're anxious, you think you overthink everything, you think you're lazy, you think you're unproductive. But oh baby, let's stop making it our personality because that is not a personality trait. This is your dysregulated nervous system. Your body has been stuck in fight or flight for so long that it seems normal to your body to be in constant stress. So today we're gonna be talking about how to regulate your nervous system for free and based on science because that's how we do everything here. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Hi for those of you who are seeing me for the first time. I'm Nessa and here we're all about self-improvement, productivity, psychology, neuroscience, wellness, beauty, a lot of it. And this is the second episode of December. I have been having some technical issues, so I had to move it up a little bit. But this is episode two of December. Basically a challenge where throughout November and December, I will be posting every single day, Monday through Friday for you guys, like a reward and a challenge for me because it is officially a year since I've started YouTube. Anyways, let's get on with the video and as you may know, some of you, I want to start December videos with answering some of you guys' questions, so feel free to skip this part. And today's question is, I'm curious to know how you manage your energy while living with a partner and how you continue to prioritize yourself even if they may have natural expectations in a relationship, especially if living together. I know you mentioned moving in with your boyfriend in another video, so I'm just curious because I'm going through this right now. Okay, I think the first most important thing is communication. Both me and my partner, we work for ourselves. We both have each other's businesses and things we're working on. So a lot, both of us, we spend a lot of time at home, but we make sure to communicate everything. Of course, you know, we have our things split up. Both of us do different things, but it's very important to set boundaries and set some rules because, you know, it, it's romantic. It's cute living in moving in with your boyfriend at the beginning, but sometimes you can fall in a rut very easily. The most important thing is just setting boundaries and talking about those expectations before moving in. My partner, he comes from a more traditional family, so, you know, the gender roles are pretty dominant, and I don't mind it. I like it that way because I don't mind doing the cooking and the cleaning. Of course, you know, Sometimes he helps. Sometimes when I'm too busy or I'm tired, he takes up the job. And, you know, it's just like it's all about communicating and also setting up, you know, we try to sit down every single week at the end of the week and talk about our plans for the next week, how we want to manage things, what we need help with, what we don't need help with, what we can take on and everything. So... Yeah, and if you live with someone sensible and someone empathetic, setting those boundaries is going to be easy for them too and also very important to them too. Anyways, that's today's question. I hope that answered it. Feel free to comment down below any other questions that you might have for next videos. If you did comment them, don't worry, I will still answer them. I will either do a Q&A video or they will just come up in a another video. And now let's move on with the video. So I want to start with saying that I'm somebody who's very anxious. I'm somebody who stresses a lot. I just, I suffer with anxiety quite a lot. So making sure that, or healing my nervous system is something that really changed the way things were going. If I don't manage my nervous system, if I don't know how to regulate it, if I don't know how to heal it and how to properly take care of it, my anxiety is through the roof. I can have days where I wake up anxious and I go to bed anxious and I'm just anxious the whole day. It affects my skin, it affects my gut, it affects my everything. So I don't think many of us realize how important this is and I think that this is just like chronic for the majority of people online because a lot of us don't realize how today's world is affecting our nervous system. So I want to keep the terminology a little bit more simpler because I don't think 
it is necessary to be spitting out some you know crazy words and go too deep into science but what you should know is that your nervous system has two pathways the sympathetic and the parasympathetic your sympathetic state is you're stressed you're wired you're urgent it's that go 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 state and the parasympathetic is the more calm state you're grounded you're feeling calm you're feeling relaxed and you're naturally of course based on different states based on different hormones based on a lot of surrounding stuff you're supposed to flow between them but that constant emotional stress those constant notification that chaotic environment coffee before breakfast and i do this every single day lack of movement overstimulation that's what's leading you to feeling stressed all the time and according to the polyvagal theory this leads to fight flight freeze and fawn and when this becomes your daily basis when this becomes chronic your body forgets how to relax and you start thinking what if something is wrong with me it's also good to mention that we as women tend to feel any type of dysregulation more intensely we have a higher cortisol sensitivity of course we have hormone fluctuations we have more amygdala processing we have more active amygdala responses and let's be honest the world isn't always easy for us there's a lot of societal pressure there's a lot of emotional labor and this means that just overall stress can sometimes hit us a bit harder and overwhelm can happen faster but that's why you have to work with it and not against it so how do you even know that your nervous system is dysregulated because nowadays people like to self-diagnose quite a lot for example for me one of the most annoying symptoms are the physical ones it's my it's when I'm having tight chest, it's digestive issues, it's shallow breathing, it's having cold feet and cold hands. That's something that I struggle with a lot and I used to have it so much. And those random fatigues. You have emotional signs like irritability, mood swings, feeling disconnection and feeling overwhelmed. And so your behavior changes. You spend more time doom scrolling. You actually don't really ever rest. You're overthinking everything and you keep procrastinating and you don't even know what's making you procrastinate so here are my six best free tools to heal that nervous system so of course there are things that you can do in the moment and then there are things that are more long term so the first one is called a psychological sign and this research actually comes from stanford university so what you do is you take a one deep inhale and after that you take one little top inhale and then you take a long and slow exhale so it's like so why does this technique work that's because the double inhale actually reopens those collapsed alveoli in your lungs and also manages to clear co2 more rapidly as well as the long exhale just activates that parasympathetic system and if you do this for 20 to 30 seconds your heart rate actually manages to drop which is when your body can finally relax. Second tool is the vagus nerve simulation through sound. So the vagus nerve, which actually controls your calmness, runs through your neck. And when you hum or make like these mmm sounds, create little vibrations that actually simulate it. So the benefits shown in research are lowered heart rate, reduced amygdala activation, and improved emotional stability. And of course, I will link all the studies down below. And this is why during meditation, you're supposed to do the um sound. The third tool is orientation. So I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you're stressed, your eyes kind of fix and then your neck really tenses up. So with orientation, you're going to reverse this. You're going to slowly turn your head to the left. Notice what you see. Slowly turn your head right. And also just observe what objects your eyes land on. And while you're doing that, just let your breath follow naturally and it's really interesting because a lot of these things really correlate with either how we were how our brain was built back in the day when we we're you know hunting and living in caves because this signals to your brain that there is no threat around you number four and this is also again a really quick one you can do and that is just simply splashing cold water on your face now i'm not a big fan of cold plunges i know that there's a lot of benefits to them but i don't think you could pay me to go and lay in an ice bath 
but I still do love either on my face or on my wrist, so just splashing some cold water. The cold water actually activates the dive reflex, which is a survival mechanism that mammals have that slows your heart rate, deepens your breathing, and shifts you immediately to the parasympathetic mode. So again, you can do this whenever you're feeling panicky, whenever you're feeling some overwhelm. Tool number five is slow rhythmic walking. Now, there are so many benefits to walking, but there's also a lot of benefits to your nervous system because that rhythmic slow moving actually calms your amygdala. That visual scanning that you do while walking stabilizes your brain and bilateral movement reduces anxiety. So if you needed one more reason to start your daily walks, this is it. And the sixth one is labeling. This is something that I actually found on my own. And then later on, when I did some research about it, it really clicked. And that is just labeling your emotions. Because when you name that emotion, your amygdala, which is a fear center, turns down and your prefrontal cortex turns on. So if you're feeling anxious, stop trying to tell yourself, oh, I'm not feeling anxious. Oh, I'm not feeling anxious. Tell yourself, okay, I'm feeling anxious. And that's fine. That is okay. Okay, I feel a little overwhelmed. Whatever, it'll be fine. Just acknowledging those emotions can really help you. Now, except these things, I wanna also talk about some actual habits and mistakes that you are making. And I'm gonna call you out because I'm calling myself out. And that is phone first thing in the morning, skipping breakfast, that is something that I do a lot. Coffee on an empty stomach, that is also what I do a lot. Never resting, never getting enough sunlight, being overstimulated by so many noises and visuals and looking at so many screens at the same time. And of course, I'm also gonna call myself out and that is not eating enough. Just finding little, you know, except these exercises that I talked about that really help you instantly. It is so important to think long term. Are you getting enough rest? actual rest not when you're doom scrolling but actual rest are you doing activities that are you know just focusing on one activities it is like reading journaling doing some puzzles doing some art something that calms you down are you eating before you get in your caffeine even if it's matcha or even if you're too sensitive sometimes even tea on an empty stomach if it's caffeinated tea can also do something to you are you spending enough time away from screens? No TV, no iPad, no computer, no phone. And this is something really funny that I've noticed that I recently got my driver's license and I've noticed that I've gotten way less anxious because I started driving quite a lot. And it's really funny because, and I was thinking, why do I get you know, so much less anxious now, even though I should be more anxious, I'm driving. But it makes sense because now if I'm driving, for example, an hour a day, during that hour, I'm away from screens and I'm just focusing on one thing. And as I said, I really noticed that I kind of don't get as anxious anymore. And on those days where I drive a lot, I tend to be way more calm. Anyway, a regulated woman is a confident woman. A regulated woman is a powerful woman and a regulated woman has clarity. So comment down below which one of these tools will you be trying or perhaps you might be even doing some of these so you can write it down below. And yeah, I love you guys and thank you for watching this video. Of course, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this and I will see you in episode three of December. Comment down your questions and check out my social media links. I love you guys. Bye. And also all of the studies will be linked down below if you want to read them yourself.